So this video is all about vision boards. And some people call it a mood board, some people call it a vision board, some people call it a way to manifest your dreams, to do with the law of attraction, and there's lots of different levels and different reasons for doing vision boards. I think for me, vision boards are all about a message, a vision, a visual of where I want to be in the future. Dear future Wendy, that kind of thing. And what I hope for, what I aim for in there is to find within all my journaling and all my pulling out of images, I am going to find a life that I don't want to take a vacation from, if that makes sense. That's what I'm after, yes. By making our vision boards, or whatever we want to call them, it's our first steps to putting them out into the world, a tiny testing them out to see how it feels in a way. We're nervous at first, tentative, unsure, but what if the daring to dream part? I think to do this with proper dedication takes courage and faith. What if I fail, you ask? There is freedom waiting for you on the breezes of the sky. And you ask, what if I fall? Oh, but my darling, what if you fly? Erin Hansen quote. So I didn't think I was going to be able to make it into the studio at all this week because I've had a bit of a hip problem and today has been the first day this week where I've actually been able to feel comfortable and not in pain all the time so very grateful for that and I've been good because I've been resting and doing all the things I'm supposed to be doing and it is an ongoing long-term thing so yeah I haven't had an accident or anything like that so cheers to you if you need a little bit of something to keep you company and hopefully you've got a nice cup of something yummy as well cozy and comforting and that's where i'm at right now anyway so suffice to say i haven't been doing much creativity in here because i haven't really been in here i had a little sketchbook date this morning with my patrons and just did a teeny tiny sketch because most of the time when I'm doing sketchbook dates, I tend to be talking to everybody because it was on Zoom. So yeah, I didn't get a lot done. She looks a bit kind of, so I think that's to do with how I'm feeling in my body, a little bit restricted and stiff and stuff. And then all I'm going to do now, I think, is concentrate on my journals, a little bit of New Year journaling, and in specific, the part I wanted to share with you, which was all about vision boards. So this video is all about vision boards. And some people call it a mood board, some people call it a vision board, some people call it a way to manifest your dreams, to do with the law of attraction and all that. So there's lots of different levels and different reasons for doing vision boards. And I think whatever level it is that you're actually making your vision board, it can really help you clarify and focus on the things that you want, things that you want to achieve, things that you want to bring into your life, things that perhaps are not tangible items, but more feelings. So ways that you want to feel I think is really key for me anyway in this process. I think rather than thinking categories I'm more focusing on ideas, making and creating, learning to be your own muse, finding the inner genius to illuminate and encourage. That's what the muse is after all isn't it? Awakening sparks and whims, activating the senses, revelations and realizations. So allow yourself to daydream and fantasize. Activate new realities by our thoughts. Positive thinking to reshape our lives. This is part of the process of writing our own story and being the leading figure in our own life. But I think the bottom line for me and the common denominator for all these things and all the different reasons and purposes and etc etc and the different levels of spirituality as well connected with it if you like I think the common thing for me is all about it's basically a system of gathering images to inspire us and there's lots of different ways of doing them I think I'm going to actually do mine on the wall in here for this one. I have done them on my laptop on my computer before and had it like a desktop situation. I also regularly do them in my journal pages which is a really private and intimate process as well and I really like doing that. And another way I've done it as well is I've bought quite a pretty frame maybe from somewhere like um, hobby craft or something like that quite a budget frame but pretty and then tucked all my pictures in there. I've actually done it on a cork board quite a few times as well where you 
can have a pin board and, and that's really nice because you can move things around and change them up as you progress through the year so it's like an evolution through the year organically adapts to your changes and needs I really like that but I've also done it where I've stuck things down and I've had you know quite a large blank canvas and pasted things images down on and words down on onto a canvas so it really depends on how you're feeling and what you're drawn to in how you do it and I'm sure there's lots of other ways of doing it that I've missed out you could leave your ideas and how you do it in the comments and then we can all get inspired by reading those I think the best place to actually start with our vision boards is our notebooks or journals and just to get a little bit of writing down into what we desire what are our wildest dreams and dream big infinite possibilities don't restrict yourself at this part of the process at all I think at the same time we can unclutter all of this that may be coming out and then we can prioritize after to make our actual vision board we don't have to put everything that's in our journaling on our vision board but it just helps sort things out into the priorities into the things that really really matter to us and those are the things we want to pull out I think for me vision boards are all about a message, a vision, a visual of where I want to be in the future. Dear future Wendy, that kind of thing. And what I hope for, what I aim for in there is to find within all my journaling and all my pulling out of images, I am going to find a life that I don't want to take a vacation from, if that makes sense. That's what I'm after. Yes. And for some of us, we might have something tangible that we want to bring into our life, like a new home. I think that's one of my things as a something tangible. It could be objects small or large, like a home. It could be somewhere that you want to be or travel to or relocate to. It could be really teeny tiny small things like, you know, a new dress or a new hairdo or something like that that's going to make you feel good because feeling good is obviously where we want to be. So don't judge yourself. I say this a lot don't I there's no judgment just really go within touch base in there heartfelt and check in with yourself good and proper give yourself a little bit of time perhaps carve yourself out a little bit of time that you are on your own or gather a few friends together that you can kind of do this together that can work out really nicely and you can go nice and deep on the process of doing it I tend to do them on my own so that's probably a big reason why I've never done one on here before because I find it quite a private process but today I'm going to let you in on that because it's a lovely circle of love and so thank you for keeping me company and once we finish the soul searching and then the written journaling part pulling out images whether it's magazines or pictures that we found online I've basically used pictures I found online and Pinterest is a really good place to go to there's lots of places online even just going to Google images is a really useful place to start pull out some images and then we can review the images and we're going to be pulling out clues and we're picking out these images that inspire us the ones that really make us feel joyful and uplifting lifted those are the ones we want to focus on and I think once we've got our images what I tend to see is I, I see a pattern emerging of the direction of where I want to be or how I want to feel and that gives me my biggest clue and I have to say it's like an enhanced journaling process to find out what I really want because that's quite a tricky question to ask yourself sometimes, isn't it? I think within that as well comes a, a bigger question, which is who I am, who am I? Because it's all about identity as well. And that will probably show up in, in your visuals. Anyway, I don't want to sit here talking and Wendy waffling to you for too long. Let's get on with it and um, I'll share my process with you. When we're thinking about how I want to feel, we want a motivation, an energy initiation, so that we can create a movement in the direction we wish to go. A kind of get off your butt vibe, if you like. We can percolate and deliberate and meditate, but not just in our heads. Get out of our heads, into nature, into air, into breath and our heart and gut wisdoms, which are also brains for the body. So just remember to listen in. We can conceive our pipe dreams, stargaze, build our castles in the sky. As above, so below, as within, so without. 
The actual words for that quote are as follows. True without falsehood, certain and most true, is that that which is above is as that which is below. And that's of course from the Emerald Tablet as translated into English by Isaac Newton. And I believe we're never too old to try something with tiny steps. It's never too late to have hope. In fact, I've found when there appears to be no answers, hope can be the only road. And this is where a vision board or space or wall or whatever can come in. And I know I've shared this quote before, but it is one of my favorite hope quotes. Where flowers bloom, so does hope. Ladybird Johnson. And it always makes me think of the earth covered in concrete on the pavements and such, and the cracks that appear in the pavement, the flowers poking their way out, somehow surviving, thriving and adapting. So what's been interesting is it's kind of looking like I've got three different categories. I think it's really quite useful rather than sitting down beforehand and putting intentions into this vision board. Sorry, I'm kind of <laughs> out of shot, but yeah, I'm here. Before you put those intentions in, I find it quite illuminating to actually pick out some images first. The ones that you are most attracted to, inspired by, the ones that are going to motivate and inspire, the ones that are going to bring joy, the ones that evoke a really strong positive emotion and then once you've gathered your images you will get clues as I say so I prefer to do it this way round and then I can kind of see what kind of vision board it is that I actually need rather than maybe what I think I need so it's a little bit more of a, a subconscious kind of situation where you're not really planning it in your head it's hopefully coming from deep within and so it's hopefully going to be a more helpful tool for us that's that's my thinking anyway and that's how i've always done it my categories i thought it might be quite nice to share those at this point i've got some kind of arty inspirations and and some words so that's kind of like a separate category my word of the year a little saying that i a little quote i'm always saying and a poem that i'm just loving at the moment speaking to me a lot and feels like it needs to go on on the wall and then i've got some a pile of pictures here which is kind of like how i want to feel so these ones are all about me and ways i want to feel if that makes sense rather than you know me on a beach although that's kind of part of it as well but it's how i want to feel that ultimate freedom and uh yeah feeling feeling wild and free in the in the in the beautiful nature and so there's some pictures there of how i want to feel and then my other oh there's another one there as well i've got some quite interesting ones i think but i want to feel really inspired you see i don't want to get bored of them so I've got one is an object which I find really beautiful and I've been looking into a lot of the Venetian glass you might have seen in my creative books video and so I've got some beautiful glass and it's got bees on it and I'm really inspired by bees at the moment and then I've got weirdly a bathroom shelf which just inspires me a lot and also a lovely cozy snug kind of situation so those are kind of like my environment these are kind of my art and creativity and then this pile is all about how I want to feel so that's my three categories made out for me if that makes sense and then you know my career and my goals it all becomes part of this rather than me having them separately and so you know this this to me is all about how I want to feel creative and quiet time alone time you know really strong and stretched and at the moment I'm obviously in pain with my back so I want to get back into my yoga and I want to feel you know really really creative I mean this kind of circusy kind of thing is kind of like for me I want to feel playful and I want to feel like I'm allowed to be playful in whichever way I choose to be so it's a little bit wild and free on those as well so I've got all sorts going on and that is going to give me all the clues I need for my categories as it were 
And of course, you know me, I'm not going to dictate to you how you should and shouldn't do this. There's no right or wrong way. But what I am saying is that sometimes doing things in a way that sometimes seems a bit backwards or a bit upside down or a bit of like a way that you wouldn't actually think it through, not logical, if you know what I mean, can give you more clues, more insights into what's going on inside your whole being. I suppose in a way it's a more holistic kind of vision board, if that makes sense. You're hopefully going to tap into more elements of yourself than just thinking it through in a linear fashion. Yes. And a lot of people in here I know are going to be much more of a creative mind. They're going to be working from the right hand hemisphere. And so this might be another way in that's going to give us some extra clues if that makes sense. I think as well, you know, when we're going through the process of doing this and diving deep, it can take a few days or even maybe a few weeks to get your thought processes and everything kind of sorted and work out what's going on because there might be some question marks as well and you think, why have I picked that image? Try to allow yourself to pick those images anyway because I think the information that it's trying to communicate with you will come out later and that may take a process throughout the year. So it can be quite interesting, quite quite mysterious, and I love that about it. This is my wall, this is the wall I'm going to use, and I'm not going to have a vision board on here that's going to be stagnant, that's going to be set in stone. I want a vision board that's fluid, and so it's going to organically grow throughout the year, and I'm going to take things away and add things up there as well. And I can share that whole process with you as we, as we go through the, the year. It's a really nice way to have it on the wall, have it in front of you. I mean, every time I'm in the studio, I'm going to see it, so that's really important, I think, to have that in our faces a little bit. And and it's also going to be a visual to me as well because it's going to be a creative visual wall that's going to hopefully spark my juices and creativity and help me stay inspired and it's going to remind me of what it is that I'm wanting to bring in whether it's a tangible thing or a feeling so it's going to be a working wall or it could be you know a, a working document or, or a working board or with a frame or journal pages or whatever it is you know for you but for me this is going to be a working wall yes i think i'm going to have a place as well for one of my um creator oracle cards as well so obviously that will change every time i change my card it's really different from my wall over there as well because my wall over there is much more a display of my artwork as it progresses through certain projects it's also swatches and things like that and source material and other inspiration this is kind of different but i am thinking there might be a little bit of crossover because obviously i'm doing this in my studio so i don't know whether that's going to have more of a kind of bring in the work kind of side of things i'm just going to go with it. It's a bit like journaling for me. I like to do it for the process and I like to enjoy the process and so I'm going to flow with the process of putting together this um this vision board. It's exciting. I'm excited which is good. It's a good sign. So this process can help you find your path find the road to your passions. You will recognise it by the sparkles it has and the flutters you will feel in your belly. Desires, wishes and priorities helps us to focus, find clarity and see the wood for the trees and move forwards to where you actually want to go. And not just with the flow, sometimes we need to find a different stream and go in the direction of our chosen flow. These are my final thoughts and the words that came up in my journal. Dear future me, dear spiritual seeker, don't overthink it. Know thy worth, but stay humble. Retain the bigger picture that we are all humans just trying to do our best. In often bumpy circumstances, 
stay compassionate to others, have kindness and grace. This is part of Project Self, Project Me, Project Wendy. The point about, you know, the subconscious mind loving images. And so I didn't want to overclutter it either. So I've kept it kind of minimal and simplified. But at the same time, I know that it's evoking a feeling in me, if you like, each image. And that's the important thing, the evoking of the emotion. I've particularly chosen images as well that have really made me feel joyful, even if I can't say why that bit doesn't matter. You know, there's things on here that inspire me to do the work in order to get to where I want to feel. So I want to feel really good in my body and healthy and strong. And so these are going to inspire me to get there. It's not just about suddenly having it. It's inspiring me to do the work, to become the best me I can be. The me that I dream that I am already, because it's in the present. And that's the other way to think about it in the present tense. It's already here. It's already happened. I am going to be as well putting some pictures of actually me on here as well as the year evolves. So those are going to be some of the additions I'm going to make. And that's going to really personalise it for me and make things seem more tangible, more it's here now. You know, if I'm up there, then whatever it is that I'm trying to call in, it's already happening. It's already on the way. I want to connect with the feelings of how I would feel if it was already in the now. You know, act as if, feel as if, as if it's here right now in this moment. But if there's anything on here that doesn't make me feel inspired and joyful and motivated, then I'm gonna take it down and change it, definitely. I'm gonna put some gratitude up here as well as part of the acting as if it was here right now. I'm so grateful to my body, it's so strong, and those kind of affirmations with gratitude, and then stick them up on the wall as well. Anything that comes up throughout the year that supports what I'm trying to feel on here. And it's all about getting involved with it, which is the important part of having it somewhere where you see every day, at least once a day, but hopefully several times a day, so that you can actually interact with it. That's the important thing. We want to visualise. We want to really imagine. It's part of visioning the next level of where we want to be. So I would suggest that you strategically place yours. And if it's in a book, maybe prop it open and have it on your desk so that that's the page you come in and look at every morning when you sit there to do your emails or whatever else. But strategically place it so that it's in your face a little bit. I'll probably put my favourite affirmations on here, which is I am worthy, I am deserving. And that supports me bringing the things that I want in as well. Well, thanks for keeping me company doing my visioning wall. I hope you've enjoyed the process and maybe you feel inspired to have a go yourself, however which way you feel that you'd like to make yours. And feel free to tag me with yours on Instagram as well. I'll put my Instagram up there somewhere. You have travelled too fast over false ground. Now your soul has come to take you back. Take refuge in your senses, open up to all the small miracles you rushed through. Become inclined to watch the way of the rain when it falls slow and free. Imitate the habit of twilight, taking time to open the well of colour that fostered the brightness of the day. Draw alongside the silence of stone until its calmness can claim you. A poem by John Donahue. I'm going to go home now, show myself some grace, take care of my hip, salt bath and get myself into bed and rest some more. So I suppose all that's left to say is thank you so much for watching. Try to keep your lights shining bright and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.